Hello and welcome to the Slingshot channel. Today we want to revisit tranquilizer darts. We had them before, I actually explained how they work. You can find the link to that video down below. But just to refresh in your memory a little bit, this is a tranquilizer dart. And this is actually the liquid, in this case it's water, but of course normally it's some kind of medication that you want to inject into an animal, wild animal maybe. And instead of a plunger, you have this pressurized chamber here that contains air pressure and you have this little silicone ring that actually covers the sideways hole so this needle won't spray out from you know to, uh, to 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 the front or you know like this way but it will actually spray out to the side as soon as this little silicone tube is uh, removed let me show this to you so here we have a board with a little hole okay and it's pressurized and now you can see that this is actually ejecting and you could see that now the syringe is empty. Very clever. If we want to refill, we first must remove like the feather bush and also the uh, syringe needle. And now we need a small little pin, like a poker, because see, this is the little red um, piece, the rubber piece that actually tightens it up. And it still has pressure, of course. We first need to release that pressure by putting this thing into here and pressing and pshht. And now, as you see, this thing is loose inside. And now we can reset the plunger. And we're using this special like pump syringe for it. <laughs> That's not for injecting liquid. That is for injecting air into the uh, distance injection dart. And first, what we do is we load it up with a little bit of air. Then we put it in here. And now we reset the plunger. And we want about three milliliters. So let's carefully put it to the three milliliter position. There you go. And then we take it off. Now we take a regular, ordinary syringe filled with the medication. We put it in here. Okay, like so. And then we fill it up. Until it's full. And now we put the needle on. So here is the needle and as you see, the silicone tube is already covering up the hole. We're putting it on and locking it. Like so. And now all we need is to repressurize uh, the chamber here. So first we shake this a little bit until the red cushion is just in the right position. Then we put it in, pump air in and remove it quickly. And now you see that this forms a little bit of a trough. So uh, that is because the pressure in the chamber is pressing against it. And it's also pressing against the liquid in here. And as soon as we remove the silicone tube, it can spray out. Now we take the feather bush and put it in and we got a syringe that is ready for a distance injection. Now for the distance injection there are several methods how to do it. Uh, often uh, people use a small gun, often operated just by a primer, sometimes even by a very very small blank. It's uh, just a one-shot gun usually, but that has the disadvantage that it is um, not unregulated in many countries, including Germany. So you need a gun license for that, and that, of course, is a lot of problems. So a lot of veter veterinarians, <laughs> sorry, complicated word, uh, won't be able to do it and don't want to do it. So um, they used, like, a blowgun, like this one here. So this is a special blowgun that is sold for these things. You first remove this here. And as you see, you otherwise cannot put it in because there is a block. And then you put the syringe dart in here, like so. And then you close the whole thing, like so. And now you can shoot it. So aiming with the blowgun is not so hard, because all you do is you put it onto your mouth and then you look along the barrel and keep both eyes open. And this automatically means that you will see two blowguns and you will hit in the middle between the two. <laughs> of course, you will have to adapt for the height. So. That was a little bit too low, but as you see, with a little practice, you can do it. Disadvantage. You can't do this for a longer distance. It takes a significant time to reload. Um, it's very hard to adapt for different distances, actually. Um, and uh, plus also, as you see, this thing is fairly clumsy. Needs a lot of practice, too. So I'm thinking, can we do this better? Can we build one that has a repeating action, that is not so big, that is unregulated in many countries? Sure, I think we can do it. So let me show you what I came up with. The repeating 
Distance Injection Syringe Crossbow. <laughs> Let me show you its features. <laughs> uh, after I switch on the red dot. <laughs> Bang! <laughs> so, as you see, it is rubber powered. It's entirely made from wood and only weighs 1.2 kilograms. It was really a light weapon. It has a red dot sight for aiming. Um, it, of course, has the sliding instant Legolas action. Why not? It has a magazine for four syringes. Actually, it fits five, but the manufacturer only recommends four. <laughs> and as you see, I had to use a lot of these little tricks here to let the string overcome the uh, resistance from this, because these are not smooth projectiles. These actually require some kind of slipping under it, so that the rubber here is a little bit lower, so there, there is pressure on the string to go a little bit deeper. So now I have four syringes in the magazine, and as you see, the lowest one doesn't even have the needle open. There's still protect the protection in it. And if I slide this back, you can see that this slides underneath the tip of the syringe, and then the syringe itself, and in the end it locks into place here. So now I have it locked, and the syringe is in line ready for the shot. And now what you can see is that I have different positions where the crossbow will lock. So this is like the easiest position. I have one that is 8 centimeters more far, and then another one that is almost at the tip, and then the maximum power one. And that is absolutely essential, because you should not forget that the problem with these things is that you can't go to, if you go if you're too close to an animal and you hit it with a lot of force you might actually kill it with a syringe going inside because these syringes lose speed very quickly because of the big feather bush and so on because they're also fairly heavy and therefore you don't want that what you want is you want to pick the right power uh, for the right distance so here we can go for example for full power because that's quite some distance and we would go for a lot less power if we are more close so like in a caged animal or something. Okay, now we have four shots in the magazine. Let's go. Okay. Ha! All four in the target. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Okay, let's find out how far they fly, because with the blowgun I can manage to shoot it about 25 meters. Aim a little bit high and higher. Woo! That was a lot more far than 25 meters. I think it hit the tree forks. <laughs> let's have a look. Now, of course, that is totally scalable uh, by just adding more rubber or making the barrel longer. I could easily get it to shoot maybe 100 meters or something, but that really makes no sense because accuracy just wouldn't be there and uh, you would actually miss so many times <laughs> that I think it is useless. This would give you like an effective range of 20 to 25 meters, which I think is all you need. And also on that distance, you will certainly hit a larger animal. This is not for uh, tranquilizing rabbits. To show you the importance of the different power uh, steps, I have actually taken this little board here into a distance that's typical like for cage uh, injection. This means that you have, let's say you have a tiger in a cage, you can't get in of course, but you will be fairly close. So I filled two syringes with water again. <laughs> it's no tiger, so I don't need any medication. <laughs> and, and let's shoot it into this sick sick board that definitely needs to be tranquilized. Okay, first we will just go to an easier step. Let's say I would probably select the second step here and inject it. All right. Oh. 
So this was clearly a successful injection. You see, the needle penetrated all the way, it's still intact. The silicone tube has been shifted back. Everything is okay. Now let's go for full power. <laughs> okay. And now full power. And fire! <laughs> yeah, that is what happens when you have too much power. Uh, imagine the poor animal. So what happened in this case is that actually you can see that the silicone tube is actually all the way over the syringe. It forced it over the nozzle. <laughs> Interesting. It didn't break and of course it ejected the liquid but not inside of the animal's body. <laughs> so that was useless. Therefore you can see how much sense it makes to have adjustable power. So what do I think about this crossbow that shoots tranquilizer darts? <laughs> I think it's actually a good idea. And uh, because it's like uh, unregulated in many countries and even though this of course makes it technically a crossbow and legally a crossbow at least here it would be very easy to adapt it so that you have to keep it under tension with your muscle and then it would be considered a bow and would probably be to totally unregulated even in countries where everything else is a band. <laughs> In any case, uh, it also has several advantages over the blowgun. As you see, it's, it's a lot more compact. Um, you could even make this cross part here detachable so that you can put it in a very small bag. It is much easier to aim and much easier to learn. It's not expensive since it's all rubber and wood. Um, I think it is accurate and it could be even more accurate if properly machined and not sawn out from hand. Um, and it is uh, absolutely powerful enough for the job. Plus it's fast, since it's a repeater, I think, I'm not a bit veterinarian, <laughs> again that awful word, uh, I'm not a veterinarian, but um, doing better. <laughs> no, but I think that often you would need a second shot if the first one misses and so on, you want to have a second one ready before the animal disappears. And this one gives you a chance to do that. So, I like it, it has potential. I'm not going to put it into production because the market is too small. But maybe someone wants to take the idea and bring it to fruition. Uh, if so, contact me for help. I'll do this for free, just for the sake of the animals. <laughs> anyway, I hope you like this, because that's it for today. Uh, thanks and oops, it was too high. <laughs> Thanks and bye bye. Whoa. Too much power. <laughs> it went right through. <laughs> so you may now ask yourself, have we lost him? Is he now over at the light side? <laughs> no, no, I'm no do-gooder. I'm actually, I think this, I like that uh, product when it can protect animals and so on, because I hate seeing animals hurting. But on the other hand, I would stay true to building weapons. And therefore I just got uh, this thing here, which is a long bow, but it's a powerful one. It actually has 110 pounds of a draw force and uh, it's been sent to me from Shad from Shadyversity. Um, and um, it is it's a bow, it's very hard to draw. I mean, it, I have to say it's very hard to draw it out. Um, and um, I want to make an instant Legolas for it. See if I can completely control it with that one. And I will make one that is actually powered by two fat, uh, rubber bands on the way down so that hopefully I can put it back with ease and shoot it from a repeating magazine. If that works, I'll send it back to Shad and see what he thinks about it. So stay tuned. <laughs>